Hi, I'm Chris Air. Welcome back to another Minecraft Mod Showcase. In today's video, we've got the Farmer's Delight Mod. This is currently on 1.19.3, but it'll most likely be updated pretty quickly to 1.20 when that comes out very, very soon. Let's run through the entirety of the mod. Look at that fun trail of chests. So for those of you who don't know what Farmer's Delight is, it's basically just a farming expansion mod, as in a bunch of new tools, equipment, and food types that you can add to the game that really expands the whole farming and food section of Minecraft. The first one of these tools that you'll be introduced into is the knives. These are either flint, iron, diamond, neverite, or golden knives. Why is that out of order? I don't care. These can be crafted via a very simple recipe of a single stick, and then the ore slash material of choice for that knife. Except for the neverite knife. Of course, this is the typical take a diamond knife and a neverite ingot, throw it into a smithing table, and you get your better knife. Grabbing out our flint knife over here, these knives do a little less damage than their sword counterparts, but they have faster attack speeds. The other thing that comes with it, though, is that they have a little bit of a bonus with their attack abilities. If we take down this cow here, as you can see, he'll drop his raw beef and a lever. Because what this knife does, it makes sure that you're guaranteed to get the mob's secondary drop. Like if we kill this chicken here, we'll get the feathers and a raw chicken. Another useful thing you'll find these knives are useful for is for cutting up grass. As you cut grass, you'll gain various different things, and one of these new items you'll get are called straw. Straw can be useful for various different things. Some of the core recipes you'll get to know more so is creating rope with three straws in a rope-like fashion, or a canvas with four rope in a square pattern. We'll get back to canvas a little later, but rope can be useful for various different things. One of the more useful things you might find is if you take four rope and put them together in a square, you'll create yourself a single safety net. But ropes are also very useful. If we grab our rope out of here, as you can see, we've got this very long drop down here. Ropes act like scaffolding, except for in the reverse fashion. If you right click on a rope that you've already placed down, this rope will place itself downwards, allowing you to have a very safe descent into caves. But let's test the other item, a safety net, which is at the bottom of our cave over here. As you can see, the safety net prevented all the fall damage that we would have taken if it wasn't here. If we go all the way back up and fall all the way back down, as you can see, we'll take no fall damage and we'll just bounce on the safety net. Of course, this acts like slime blocks effectively, so if you do hold shift when you hit the ground, you will take the fall damage and it will hurt, as always. Now, the next things you'll probably discover are these little plants here. Now, depending on what biome you're in, will depend on what ones you come across, but basically you get various different wild plants. These are just wild variations of typical crops. You've got your vanilla counterparts of wild carrot, wild potato, and sea beets, as well as your brown mushroom colony and red mushroom colony, which don't spawn anywhere near as often. But then you also have various other wild seeds. You've got a wild cabbage, wild onion, tomato shrubs, and wild rice. If we grab ourselves our knife out, go back to survival mode, as you can see, when you break down one of these wild plants, you'll gain a single seed of that archetype. As you can see, we've got a single cabbage seed, we get a single onion seed, as well as alums, because, you know, they are on top of onions. We get the tomatoes, we do get some tomatoes, but we get two tomato seeds as well. We get two carrots, we get two potatoes, we get two, we get two beet seeds, and of course with the rice, we get the rice seed. Now rice will act a little differently. Wild rice will be found in shallow patches of water and just for this plant in particular, you wanna grow it with shallow pads of water. Moving along, you've got the tools of the trade here. These are various little things that you'll make over time to make full use of this mod and the beautiful things that it comes across. Probably the first thing though, is the stove. The stove is effectively an upgraded campfire. As you can see in the recipe here, it requires four bricks, a campfire, and three iron ingots. When you place it out in the world, it will automatically be lit. Now a beautiful thing with this stove is you can just take the six, you can take six items and place them on top of the stove like you would a campfire. Of course, once these cook, these will pop right off. But you can also create other things to put on top of these stoves. For example, a cooking pot. A cooking pot will require five pieces of iron, water bucket, a wooden shovel, and two bricks. You create one of these and pop it on top of a stove or a heat source of sorts. You right click on it, you've got this new crafting interface. This can allow you to cook various different things. For example, we're going to take these various different vegetables here and a bowl. So you want to throw these vegetables inside of your cooking pot's main thing, and then you put a bowl as your container in here, and as it, we wait for it to cook. And what we get here is a vegetable soup. 
Now, items cooked this way in a cooking pot will give you various different effects. Two, to be precise. You either get comfort or nourishment. Taking both of these, comfort will give you comfort. Basically what comfort is, is it allows you to have natural regeneration regardless of if you have the hunger to suffice it or not. So let's just, as you can see, the health effects change a little bit now that our hunger's gone down. Instead of the usual regeneration effect, you see white flat fl highlights going across our hearts as we're regenerating, and we're still regenerating health despite our hunger decreasing. Now the other, nourishment, if you eat that, it will give you nourishment which pretty much means that you cannot lose hunger whilst this effect's in place. Hunger debuffs will also not affect you. Basically, it freezes your saturation for whatever this duration is, which is pretty neat to say the least. The next item of use that you'll use in your cooking adventures is a skillet. A skillet requires a single brick and four iron ingots in this fashion here to create yourself a skillet. Now the beautifulness of a skillet, if you take our raw pork chop from before, put it in your offhand and grab your skillet and we hover over this campfire over here or a heat source, right click, it'll take the item in your offhand and it will cook it. It'll take a little bit, we just hold it there, and you see we've got another cooked pork chop, we keep holding it there and we cook another pork chop. A pretty simple way to have portable cooking. But another thing you can do, if you go up to a stove, hold shift and then right click, you'll place the skillet down on top of the stove instead. And with this, grab a full stack of cookable items, slap it in the skillet. Now as this cooks items, it will throw them around. It'll throw them off to the side and that's where you can craft this beautiful thing known as a basket, which has gone the wrong way around, lol. This is pretty much the inventory of a single chest and it will catch items like a hopper on top of it. Unlike a hopper though, it does not have any item outputs, it will only pick up items from above and that is it. To craft a basket, you'll require three canvas and four bamboo. Another set of items you might introduce yourself to are called drinks. These drinks can have various different effects, but you can start off the basis of turning a single milk bucket into four milk bottles. This requires a single milk bucket and four glass bottles and you create four milk bottles. This can replace milk buckets in every given recipe that uses milk in survival Minecraft, which is pretty useful because it makes it so you don't have to get as many milk. And these milk buckets, these milk bottles, when you drink it, it'll randomly remove one of the effects. Doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative effect, it will remove a random effect. In this case, to remove darkness, if we drink another milk bottle, it removed our poison. We got pretty lucky that we're still with our strength and nothing else, but if we drink it again, it now removes our strength. There are drinks that you can create. For this first one here, we want to get two coffee beans, and two cocoa beans, a sugar, and a milk, and then put a glass bottle in our container. Give that a moment, and we create ourselves a hot cocoa. Now, unlike the milk, instead of just simply clearing a random effect, it will clear one n harmful effect. So let's say in this case here, we've got saturation, strength, darkness, and haste. If we drink our hot cocoa, it'll remove the darkness effect and nothing else. If you get two apples, sugar, and put a glass bottle in your container here, we give it a moment, we'll create an apple cider. And we drink our apple cider, we can give ourselves absorption one for one minute. If you grab some melon slices, some sugar, and go out to a crafting table for this one, grabbing your four melon slice, your sugar, and a glass bottle, you can create yourself a melon juice. Now, the melon juice is interesting. With our saturation down, you can use a melon juice, let's drink it up, to heal one heart of health. Next, we move on to another useful tool in this mod, the chopping board. This can be created via four wooden planks and two sticks. Slap this on top of any bad boy block. For example, here I've decided to use a cabinet which comes with this mod, and we've slapped it with our knife in it. Let me just, uh, Grab my knife. So over here, we can see the five different tools you can use on this shopping board. Now, I'll just say it here. I highly recommend you get something like just about everything or like one of these mods that give you all these items over here because the amount of crafting uses for a shopping board is crazy. We go over here and we'll just see what can be used on a cutting board. There's 26 pages to be used directly on a cutting board containing various different items, knives, axes, pickaxes, and shears. But just to give you a few simple ones, let's grab out some raw chicken and a knife. We put the chicken on the thing, we knife it. 
it will split it into raw chicken cuts and some bone meal. Put it there again, chop it into our basket it goes. We grab ourselves out some logs over here and he iron axe it. It will split it into stripped oak log and tree bark. Tree bark which will be useful in a moment, but again, useful thing you can do. You grab out some stone and iron pickaxe, you can slap a stone on here and right click on that bad boy and you'll get yourself some cobblestone. Don't know why you would do this over just simply mining things. You can grab gravel, throw it on here, use a shovel and you can, well you can attempt to get flint though good luck on that <laughs> and then another useful thing is if you grab any form of wooden or leather weapons and tools you can use either a shear for leather or an axe for your wooden tools to reclaim some of the resources used on those tools this tree bark here it's useful for a very very important thing you'll get and that is creating a thing called organic compost organic compost can be created by using four tree bark two bone meal, a piece of dirt, and straws. You can also find this amongst villagers, but basically this would spawn with organic compost all over here with a few mushrooms on top of it, including the mushroom colony over here. Now, over time, organic compost will turn into rich soil. This will go faster if you put it near growth activators such as mushrooms and leave it out in the sun. In these villages you'll also find rich soil inside of this storehouse here as well which can be very useful if you need to get a good amount of this quickly. Coming back over here, over here I have created myself a little farm that is using only rich soil. One of the beauties of rich soil, you can't trample crops with rich soil. If we just harvest all this real quickly and we place it all down at random interview at randomly it will bone meal some of these items so it will grow your items a little bit quicker than usual do I whoop there it is there's one bone meal there as you saw it there outside of normal growing habits it brought bone meal and there's another one over here you can see by the green particles so one of the other food types you'll come across a feast these are mostly created via crafting recipes and crafting tables, but the stuffed pumpkin is created in the cooking pot. We we're using a pumpkin as a container. And basically, these act kind of like cakes. Except in one little thing. You need to get a bowl to eat these. Except for sushi. The sushi plate, you can just eat normally. But if you grab a bowl, you right click on this and it'll slowly consume it all until there's nothing left. And then it'll give you a bowl and a bone back or for the shepherd's pie, you can shoot them piece by piece, and then bump. A great way to have some really cool displays in your world and also useful food at random. Probably another one of the little important things that I'll show you guys here for this mod is that it comes with two additional cooking items that you can create for your pets. You can create dog food and horse feed. Now when you give this dog food to a tamed wolf, will, the wolf will get speed, strength, and resistance for five minutes. Let's just give it to him there. As you can see, he's now got a bunch of particle effects off of coming off of him. He has golden car stars, and if he moves around, come on boy, he's a lot faster. And we grab ourselves horse feed. Horse feed will give a horse speed to and jump boost for five minutes. Again, it has to be a tamed horse. We give it to him, lead, and we move around a lot faster. And we also have jump boost. Now there's a lot more that comes with this mod, various different food items you can craft and some other additional little changes and decorative items, but this is just the core of the mod, showing you all the mechanics and all the bits and pieces that will come with this mod. There are also a collection of add-ons that do various different changes and stuff like that, so if you want me to run through those in another video, maybe let me know in the comments down below. But if you did enjoy this mod showcase, make sure to hit the like button, maybe subscribe, and click this video on screen now, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.